Greetings, Panavalanian, Super Supermanium, Station Master Wes Green. It's me, Alter Ego. It's actually Steve. <laughs> Bit of a different video today. I've been doing some work on uh, this is a Finney A4 tender, but I thought I'd have a chat, a bit of a chat about soldering. Now, with soldering, and I'm no expert, there's no such thing as one iron fits all. I mean, you know, it's like everything, isn't it? When you think about it, you know, you don't paint your house with a um, Windsor and Newton triple zero sable brush. No, no, you do bits of lining with that. Well, some people do. I've got one, but anyway. So basically, I've got three irons. Not any old iron. Any old iron, any old iron. Any, any old... I've got three irons. So i got... i got this one, a Duratec. It's a resistance soldering... No, sorry. Start here. It's a temperature controlled soldering iron. 45 watt. It's got different bits. You can turn the temperature up and down. You can solder white metal and stuff like that. So that's good. But it's only got a small tip. But sometimes, you know, especially when you sold them something big, you need a lot of heat. So I've got this iron. I've got this on Bunnings. It's cheap. It's about $30. Switchable, 50 or 100 watts. It's also got interchangeable tips. You probably couldn't get replacements. You get two of it. You get a screwdriver bit and a, and a you know, a, what do they call it? A round one. Uh, kind of cool tip, that's the word. I've got a nickname for this, it's called Mother. M U W V E R. Mother. Don't ask why, work it out yourself. Alright? Anyway, that's Mother. So, because brass conducts heat very well, uh, when you're trying to solder, especially a long fillet between the bottom and the side, unless you get a lot of heat into it, the solder goes a bit sort of. I don't know, pudgy and a bit, it never quite flows. So you can use low melt solder, but I get away with this stuff half the time. This is just your common or garden electrical solder. Although I've got 145 and one, uh, 145 and 188 and low melt for. But anyway, I want to talk to you about this little baby today. This is called an RSU. RSU, resistance soldering unit. RSU. So I'm gonna, there's nothing magic about it, but I'm gonna have a bit of a chat with you. For those who don't know, inside that this is a, well, I didn't make it, but someone else made it. It's virtually a homemade job. You can't buy these, uh, but someone, I know someone who makes them in, in Australia. But anyway, so what it, there's only one electronic component in it, and it's this thing, which is a light dimmer. So, so what I'm going to do is show you what this is and roughly how it works. As I said, there's no electronics involved. Let's get rid of this stuff. <clears throat> so basically you've got this box. Inside, it comes in via a switch on the back. There's a little uh, a power indicator. It goes away to a foot switch. This is how you control it. Foot switch, it's got 240 and you just... You can hear it, just, a, just set of contacts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw you a little picture now of what we got. I won't draw the box, right? So, basically... This is the mains lead. Oh. We'll put this what it is. Resistance. Resistance. Depends on its soldering. Unit. Solder. Oh, ONG. Have you noticed how Americans call it soldering? It's actually funny. I thought it was a bit rude, but, but I, I googled it. Why? I thought are these Americans crazy. It's actually it comes from a French word. I suppose you'd say I am going to solder. So, but in Britain, I think they thought solder sounded a bit rude, so they called it soldering. Apparently, that's I googled that. 
So resistant soldering unit. Anyway, so here's my here's look. Here's my mains plug. Three leads. Three. So it comes in. Fire <clears throat> switch on the back. Okay, there, there's my switch. Then then you got a, a some form of a LED light. Oh, I should have drawn this the other way around. It doesn't really matter. Comes down. This is my foot switch. Uh, and goes back up there, right? So when you press down, that makes that makes contact, right? Then this is this. So as I said, uh, then what it does, it goes through. This is the only electronic thing. This is a light dimmer, you know, where you turn it and the light goes off. And you, so that will go from probably zero volts up to 240 volts. <clears throat> That's the only electronic thing. Then, then it goes into a big transformer. This is a primary. And on the other side, is, I don't know, I can't remember, I did pull it off. There are two secondaries. Each one of those is six volts. So if I turn this up and get my multimeter out across there, if I was to go across the terminals, I'd get six volts. And if I went across that one, I'd get six volts. It stands to reason. If you put a strap across there and go between there and there, you get 12 volts, right? So it's like a train transformer, only it provides a lot of current, it's heavy. Um, and it provides masses of current, even more current when instead of putting them using one, you parallel these up. So if you you virtually well, you're going to be careful how you do this because if you get it wrong way around, you've got yourself a short circuit. So basically, what they do is they go like that and like that, and that these are the terminals on the front. You got me? Now, if you don't know already, <clears throat> when current passes through resistance, you get a voltage drop and you get heat, which is how kettles work, anything resistance. So you get a lot of current, it heats up. So what we've got here, oh, I'll draw the box. So here's the box. All this is the guts inside of it. I know that, because you know what? Me being curious, I had to pull it apart. So there you go, there's my control at the front. And there's two terminals. Now, it doesn't matter which way you do this, because it's not rectified, it's AC. So there's no positive and negative, All right? So what they do, I've got a plate, and I'll show you the plate in a minute. Uh, we'll, I think we'll do it like this. So one lead, goes straight to there, onto the plate. The plate's got holes in it and it's tapped. It's a chrome plate uh, and it's tapped. I've, I've got to, I'll show you in a minute. The other one comes down through some thick cable. It has to be thick. And there's a probe. It's got this brass thing on the end and it's got these, um, oh, where is it? I think they call them gouging rods. The last time I got this, I got them from Eileen's Emporium at four mil. So there's a oh, there's a brass gouging rod. It's four mil, and you can sharpen these with a um, pencil sharpener. So that is it. And basically, if I was to press the foot switch, so I've got a voltage across there, and I only need probably only need to put it. I normally don't have it up at maximum. I only have about three or four max. Basically, if I was to put this on that, it would spark, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. So that's it, okay? You got me? I'm glad we're cooking with gas. I'm glad you're understanding me, right? So basically, okay, what we've we got. Oh, this is what I've got on the outside. Oh, let's see if I can, uh, it's better. This is the box, that's the little dimmer probe. Got this metal plate and the cable. 
It doesn't matter which way these are connected with them because this is alternating current. So it's either, well, it's, it's alternating current. So there's no positive and negative. So let's have a look. So here, there's the box. I've got one cable goes to this. This is earthed. This plate is very heavy. It's got little, what do they call it, feet on the bottom. It's tapped. I can't remember what size. This is 8B, uh, anyway, MA3, uh, M6 or whatever it is. I can't remember. So it's that. I've also, so you can hold things down or even a piece of um, aluminium angle. Or, you could, or if you want to solder on the flat or do a joint, you can... Using these magnets, I'm not going to pull these off. These are rare earth magnets, and you don't want to ever get your finger caught between two of them. Gives you a nice little pinch, I'll tell you. So basically, obviously at the moment, if I press this, you'll hear 50 hertz hum, and there you go. And obviously, if I've only got that on a setting of four, something like that. Probably don't even need that much. So what I'm going to do to show you, and I could do this with a normal arm. What I like about this is you can, where this is really good, if you want an overlay, you can put a piece of brass down, put some solder paste on top. You can put this on top and it's cold. Adjust the exact position and then press the, press the foot switch. The solder melts, take your foot off, just leave it there for a second, pull it off, and it's soldered. So what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to put, just show you, I'll just put this one on. Here's one I've done earlier. This is one of these, uh, I don't know which one this is for the, um, one's a hand, one would be a handbrake, I suppose, and the other one's, uh, uh, what do I call it, for the water trough, a scoop. And no, it won't be connected. <laughs> So I don't get my finger in the way. So I've got this. And there's a hole down the bottom and there's a hole there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop this in. And hopefully you don't get my hands in the way so you can see what I'm doing. So that fits in there. So, as I said, look, I could do this with a normal iron. So anyway, but I've got this out. So here's my solder paste. So what I'll do is I, I will just, just lift that up, put a bit of solar paste around the top of it, there we go, I'll put it like that. Now, all I've got to do, I'll put that on the top. Can you see that? Let's see if I can zoom in a bit so you can see it more. See, so I'll put this on here and that's cold. Now, you have to press down because you need a bit of a contact. I can come up from underneath. Ready? I could probably turn this down a bit. And that, that's soldered in. All I've got to do is clean this up now. I've got a bit of solder on there. I'll just clean that up. Here's the Dremel. Oh, I've elbowed it, haven't I? And now, look at this. 
bloopers, bloopers. It's stuck, man. Sharp. So there you go. So that. Let's come back out there. I'll never make Sam's trains, will I? I won't be 3D printing. So there you go. That's all done. So that's it. That's how they work. So um. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna t I'm gonna show you the guts of it. So I, I can't resist it. <laughs> I've got a disclaimer here, kids. Don't try this at home or without adult supervision. I'm 70 and I still need adult supervision. <laughs> and I'm a kid. Okay. <clears throat> Never tempt fate. Seriously? That's a plug. And I know it's unplugged because the light went off when I pulled it out. You ready for this? This is a full frontal, right? This could get banned for YouTube. Showing you a full frontal. This scene contains nudity. Ta ta ta! Oh, my goodness, that's disgusting. <laughs> As you can see, the power, the power comes uh, in. Um, there's a foot switch, goes, one of these is a foot switch. There is a simple on off switch and there's a, down the bottom, that's a, a lead. <clears throat> there's a light dimmer. Clips all, right? Uh, goes to the probes. Uh, the transformer. I'll tell you what the transformer is. You can see it's big. It's, it's called an R. Oh, hang on. It's called an RS five o four o nine eight five o four o nine eight. Uh, you get 100 volt amps for uh, on each second, uh, each secondary. So, as you see, there's two secondaries, positive, and negative, or oh, not positive and negative. So, what they've done is you can see they parallel these up, so you get six volts, so you get double the current than you would if you had 12 volts. That's it. Let's have a look at this. Um, let me see how much these transformers are. So I just looked them up on the web. You can get this. This is an RS components transformer, which is why it's got RS. I'll just read it again. RS 504-098. You can buy them here in Australia for $211. That's about 100 quid. As you can see, it's a big thing. So there's not much in them, is it, really? So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed my little video. A bit educational today, isn't it? And um, anyway, as I said, kids, don't do this at home. Oh, yeah, don't use it. I uh, don't play with it in the bath either. You know, just don't. It's not a toy. So if you like my little video today, leave a comment. Subscribe to my channel. Give us a like. I like likes, right? Don't know why. I don't get paid for this. Even though the eBay, uh, YouTube always hammer my channel with ads. But I'm not monetized anyway. That's another story. Don't go there. Anyway, that's it. Oh, something I meant, meant, I meant to add. These. This is only carbon. And obviously the current goes up the outside of the copper. And just heats up the tip. Otherwise it'll get pretty hot. Be careful. Don't drop these because... The, look, I'll show you. I'll just drop one. As you can see, you drop the end, drop it on the floor. Hang on, it's easy. It's making a lie out of me. Yeah, snaps. So you can go through a lot of those. So there you go. Uh, and I just thought I'd better forewarn you about that. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to get on with this model now.